hey guys and girls welcome back to another beautiful video on this beautiful channel on this beautiful day how you guys and girls doing hope you're doing great hope you had a great christmas vacation and i don't know when i'm gonna put this video up but it's probably gonna be around new year so happy new year as well um yeah what the hell are you doing watching this video but anyway 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 please check out the description box you got a bunch of useful links down there all kinds of stuff discord twitter support page also drop a like subscribe if you like the content blah 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 all that stuff thank you for watching though thanks for being here uh, because today we're going to be talking about collision detection and it's going to be a little mini series uh, because there's a lot of things to talk about lots of code so you don't get bored we're going to have a little shorter videos today we're just going to create the player quickly we're going to create the screen and we're going to do collision detection with the screen Next video, we're probably going to add some stuff and uh, eventually lead up to the full wall collision detection system. And it's not fault free. There are going to be some errors a little bit. We're going to tweak it as time goes on and I'm going to check it out. There's always some kind of problems with colli collision detection that you can solve. Um, but yeah, I'll try to I'll try to fix it as much as much as I can. Uh, anyway, let's just get going. So the screen, right? So here I have some. Uh, code that I just just wrote just so that uh, we have some starting point basically include all this using namespace sf uh, this is kind of important so just use this uh, create the window set the frame rate limit to 120 uh, and this is good later when we're going to try the collision detection with lower frame rates uh, just to show you and how we use delta time with the collision so just make sure you update delta time like this window clear window display all that stuff so let's just start off here by creating the player um, and the player is nothing more than a rectangle shape right now shape player mm, and we'll set the size to we'll set the color to okay I probably want a const float grid size We'll set the grid size to 50. So I'm going to use grid size to lay out walls and and just go ahead and, and do all that stuff. And everything should be pretty much the grid size. Every player, every wall is going to be the grid size. So we don't get anything that's a lot bigger than the grid. You don't have to do this. I promise later I'll show you how to use um, hit boxes and stuff. And, and it's just the same principles. Uh, and stuff doesn't have to be the same size in order for this to work. So just remember that. Um, anyway, set the size of the player to uh, grid size for now. Grid size, grid size. Okay, so that's good. So now we have a player and I'm probably going to render the player. So, just like so. And now we have the render and we have the player. So I'll probably be able to see the player on screen. Um, sorry about that. Mm, 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 mm. Okay. Mm, so once we have that going, I also got to just do one thing. One second. There we go. Let me just start a little app on my phone that helps me out sorry about this should have done this before there we go okay and also am i recording yep so step two mm, player movement so obviously with collision you're gonna have to move the player around and that's very simple we're just gonna create an if statement and we're gonna say keyboard is key press this is all stuff we've talked about before um so A, and then we're going to have, um, what the hell just happened? Oh, there we go. Okay. So A, S, no, W, let's start with W, S, A, D. So pretty much up, down, left, right. And for that, we're going to actually create a movement speed variable. Uh, I like to do it like this. I like to do a const float movement speed. 
uh, maybe 100.f, something like that. And then I like to create a vector 2f velocity. Okay. And this is just, they're just going to work together. Very easy. No big deal. Because at the end of this movement thingy and at the beginning, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do velocity equals 0.f. Velocity dot y equals 0.f. And velocity dot x equals 0.f. I think this makes it a little easier. And then you're going to kind of add velocity, add movement speed to velocity here. And then we're going to move the player. So player dot move velocity. Okay, makes it a little easier, just like that. It's nothing too complicated. It's just using an extra variable uh, to move the player with a vector, like in real life, quote unquote. Uh, and then what we're gonna do in the WSND? God, damn, I'm just gonna put my phone on no sound. Uh, there we go. Sorry about that. Uh, so when you're moving up, what we're gonna do is velocity dot y equals uh, movement speed, move length speed, movement speed, multiplied by delta time. And obviously y is, mm, y is a negative movement, or w up is a negative y movement, right, in the y axis. So that's why we have it like this. And I'm just gonna copy this. You probably know all this, so I'm not gonna spend too much time uh, messing around here. So we're gonna remove the minus there, remove the minus at the bottom. Uh, because D is a positive x-axis movement and A is a negative. So there you go. Just make sure it looks like this. And now you should be able to move your player. There you go. So now we can move the player. But what is happening? So this video we're going to talk about the collision detection with the screen. And it's pretty, Im pretty important because you probably don't want to move outside of the screen most of the time. Um, to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to do after this player move velocity, we're gonna do the screen collision because screen collision is very simple. It's not hard. And you probably don't always want a screen collision. Um, but if you do, this is how you do it. So this is the first part of the video. If the, no, not this, if player dot get position dot X is less than zero. Okay, if we're, if we're outside of the screen in the X axis, then we're gonna say, so used to classes, so I always write this. Uh, player set position zero, and then player dot get position dot y. Okay, because we don't want to change the y position of the player, we just want to retain it, but we want to set the player's position to zero. If you're outside, if you're less than zero, we want to make sure you set it to zero. So we kind of snap back into the screen. Okay. And to show you what the hell's happening, I have this little paint thingy going. Basically, zero, 0 of the screen is uh, to the left, top corner. And what's going to happen is if you have your player here, and remember, the player's position is also uh, dependent on the top left corner of the player. So we have your player. So zero, 0 of the players up here, the position of the player. So here, maybe I'm about 100 to the right and maybe 100 down. But if I move this way, we're going closer. Now I'm 50. Oh, I'm nearing zero. What happens here? Well, I'm less than zero of the x-axis. So it's going to just snap me back to zero. So it will never, it will go outside, but it will never look like it's going outside. It will always snap back. And we're, we have to do everything for the same, or well, the same thing for every corner of the player's thing and every corner of the screen. So this is easy. And top is also easy because if the y position of the player is zero, less than zero, we're just going to snap it back to zero. But it gets a little complicated when we talk about the other parts of the player. Because these parts are, you know, you have to kind of calculate it with the width and the height and everything. But we'll just get going. Um, so this is the top right collision. No, right collision. Collision. And then we're going to do the top collision. Just going to copy paste that. Uh, top collision. Mm, there we go. So if the y coordinate is less than zero, then we're just going to retain the x coordinate. Okay, make sure to change that to x and set it to 0 0.f. I'm just going to put 0.f after each of these because they're all floats. 
there you go so we're gonna set the y coordinate to zero so let me just show you that this is working real quickly this is very easy stuff it's not too complicated so i'm trying to move out it's not moving out it's not moving it's not moving out to the top either you can try this i'm holding down w nothing is happening okay so that's great but it can still move out of the uh, oh this is left sorry about that left collision um, now we need to do right and bottom collision and they're a little more complicated um, so right collision oh i could have just pasted it ha huh. anyway so now we need to check if this side of the player is outside so we need to take the position of the player plus the width of the player to get to this point and see if that is less or if that is greater than 800 then we have to set it to 800 minus the player's width so we snap back here otherwise it's going to snap here if we put it to just uh, position to 800 it's going to be like this we don't want that we want it to be out here okay so the position of the player minus no 800 minus the width of the player so let's just uh, try that out player get position x plus player dot get global bounds dot width is greater than uh, window width okay so if it's greater than with the window width we want to make sure the player's position in the x-axis is uh, window width minus player dot get global bounds dot width and then we want to retain the y position okay so this will make sure we can't go out of the screen on the right and you can just copy paste this for the y because it's the exact same um, exact same technique basically for the bottom it's just that you need to switch this up with the y coordinate so if the player's y coordinate plus the height of the player is greater than the window height okay so if we're going down below we're gonna set the position to player or window height and the minus the player's height and then retain the x position all you have to do is just take this x position and put it where it should be up in the front because here the first variable is obviously first parameter is always the x coordinate so we're going to retain the x coordinate window height global bounds height window height height and y okay just remember that so if we try this now the window collision should be complete pretty much pretty much complete uh so can't go out to the left going down going down going down can't go down from the bottom see going to the right can't go out to the right boom so we got full window collision okay full window collision no problems so just remember this thing with the points so we're always going from the top left so if you want to check if the right top right corner is outside of the screen you have to add take this position wherever it is in the world add the width to it so you get this position so you can kind of see if this is outside so otherwise you're just going to be working with this with the position okay so you just want to make sure same thing for the y always remember that and then uh, then that should work in the next video we're probably going to have a little wall here hopefully and the player uh, is going to try to collide with this wall i don't know what the hell just happened uh, whatever we'll just have a play like this it will try to get in here but it shouldn't it should just be stopped like this and we'll be able to go around the wall there is always one problem is when you exactly touch corner to corner it might flip out so i'm going to try to fix that in the coming videos uh, but a good way to do that is to see uh, the next position of the player and all that stuff but we'll we'll solve all that stuff in time anyway this was a a video about the window collision so hopefully that that helped hopefully you learned something thanks for sticking with me thanks for watching uh, it's been a while since i made a sfml video so there you go there you go hope you enjoyed um, but like i said check out the description box fix uh, or do all that stuff just follow me drop a like subscribe if you like the content otherwise just keep you know just drop a comment or something just say hi whatever <laughs> if you have any questions ask me down there in the comment uh, section or you just um, email me or ask me on discord all right thank you again for watching take care and i'll see you guys and girls in the next one all right bye bye